So let's imagine you're building a processor. I mean, this isn't hypothetical. You'll actually have an opportunity to build a processor or some other really large digital system by the end of this course. So even a really simple processor is pretty big, at least in terms of the things we've been building so far. And you can't possibly reason about everything inside a large processor at the level of logic gates. Right? So up to this point, you've been able to basically hold the entire design in your head. And the only way we're going to be able to go further, to be able to build something of the complexity of a processor, is to be able to break the design down into smaller blocks that you can reason about. So this is known as structural modeling. So describing big circuits by wiring little circuits together. Uh, sometimes it's called hierarchical modeling because we're building a hierarchy of modules. So let's try an example. So suppose we're building a digital clock. So we're gonna have some kind of box here that is our digital clock. And it's gonna have four digits coming out. So, and you know, we could connect these to a seven segment display or some other, some other kind of display thing for each digit. And so inside this box, so we'll just call this box a clock. And we might have, for example, a timer block. So the timer is going to keep track of what time it actually is. And then it's gonna produce for example, let's say it produces an hour and a minute. And the problem though is like if we, if I just have minutes and I try to display that on my digits, I need some way to break that you know, minutes from zero to 59 into two digits. And it turns out yeah, that's relatively simple in C, you can just do like a mod operation or something and a division. Um, it turns out that's kind of pain in digital logic, so let's go ahead and create a box that just does that. So this will be a digit splitter. And we'll probably want another digit splitter for the hour. So again, hour is gonna be from say zero to 23, and we wanna split that up into two digits that we can display on our final output, so we need another digit splitter. Okay, so we'll feed the hour into the first digit splitter, we'll feed the minute into the second digit splitter. And then coming out of this, we get two numbers, so like in the case of the minute digit splitter, we're gonna get numbers from zero to nine and then zero to five. And then we need to convert those numbers into whatever this display actually needs. So we'll have another box. Um, that is our display control. And we'll have another three copies of that. And then each of these then drives one of the displays. Let me just put DC for your display controller. Okay, what I've drawn here is called a block diagram. So I haven't shown any logic. There's no, no logic gates, nothing here um, that shows how this is implemented. I've just shown each module with its inputs and outputs and shown how they're all connected together. And now we can have multiple layers of hierarchy even. So for example, this timer block maybe is composed of multiple different things. So I could go ahead and draw another block diagram here. So this is inside the timer. Maybe has a pulse generator that's gonna keep track, that's actually gonna generate the timing signal. So like.
and then maybe it's going to drive sec a seconds counter and a minutes counter um, and an hours counter. So we've got each of these blocks that are counting seconds and minutes and hours. And our pulse generator is going to drive the seconds counter, which is then going to drive the minutes counter, which will drive the hours counter. And then minutes and hours are the parts that actually come out of this thing. And so we've created this hierarchy of components where at this high level, I just think about this timer block as something that produces an hour and a minute, and I don't have to worry about what's going on inside. But if I dig down, I can say that, oh, actually, it's, it's composed of a bunch of smaller blocks as well. So we've got these different counters, we've got this pulse generator, and I could dig into each of those blocks and look at their implementation. Okay, so I, like I drew a bunch of stuff, but what's the point? So first, this kind of hierarchical design and drawing block diagrams makes it possible to reason about large designs. So by the end of the course, we'll be able to draw an entire process around a piece of paper, and you can think about what's going on in the processor at that level. But then each of those blocks, you can then break apart and look at internally how they're behaving. Um, and so you can reason about the whole processor as, as a single design, um, and then dive into an individual module and think about what's going on there. Um, often we'll use the term black box. So we can think about, for example, this digit controller as a black box. I don't have to, at this top level, I don't have to worry about how the digit controller works. I just say, I'm gonna give it you know, four bits representing zero to nine, and it's gonna give me whatever I need to drive this display. And I don't have to think about the internals. I can just think about composing my overall design here. Second, it reduces code duplication. So right, I can create this digit controller module, just like in software, right? I can create this once and then I can duplicate it multiple times. And again, if I have to update anything here, um, I can update it for all of them. A third, it reduces testing. So it's a lot easier to test three small things than it is to test one big thing. Uh, in particular, because a small thing, for example, if I've got something that has five possible, some combinational circuit, it's got five possible inputs and one output, I can just exhaustively test that and prove that it works. Um, and if I have three of those, so with five inputs, that would give me 32 combinations, right? I can exhaustively test that with no trouble at all. And if I had three different ones, I could you know, do 32 tests times three, still 100, uh, or 90 tests, like 96 tests, no problem at all. But if I took those same three things and just combine them all into one big blob, now I have 15 inputs and one output, and I have two to the 15 things. So now I have 32,000 tests I have to do to exhaustively test it. And that suddenly got a whole lot worse. And finally, it makes splitting a design up like this makes collaboration practical. So for example, you could be working, you know, one person can work on the decode the display controller part, one person could be working on the digit splitter, somebody else is working on the timer. And because each of you are working in your own modules, you can, and you've defined what these interfaces are between them ahead of time, it's relatively easy to collaborate and then put all the pieces together once you've got them finished. So hopefully I've convinced you that structural modeling and decomposing things into a hierarchy is a good thing. Um, in fact, in, in really large projects, there are engineers who get paid, like their entire job title revolves around being able to take a really large design and break it down into pieces that other people can work on. Um, this kind of systems engineering is super important. It's, it's critical to the way we build large systems today. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how do we actually do this with VHDL? It's, it's all nice to draw it on a diagram, but how do we turn this into VHDL code?